Cabinet of Wonders, Chapter 3. Lightning and Wasp. <clears throat> Petra locked the shop behind her and strode down the street. She had an idea. When she neared the center of Okno, the soft clapping of her footsteps echoed against stone walls. The street stretched before her in a straight, clean line. She passed the bakery, which was entering into its third round that day of preparing fresh bread. Petra glanced into an open window and saw strong arms studding dough against a wooden table. That everything was so normal seemed strange to Petra. She reached the main road, where most of the artisan shops were arranged in, neat ro in a neat row. Wooden signs hung, hung above the doors, each showing a different painting so that people who could not read would recognize the shop they wanted. Mistress Jugo gave her a sour look and stepped back inside her toy shop, which was marked by a wooden board showing a spinning top. Although Petra's father had done his best to explain that his tin pets were made in limited numbers and were just a sideline project in his metalworking trade, Mistress Jugo hadn't spoken to the family in years. She took Master Chrono's inventions to be the beginning of a slowly unfolding, unfolding plot to take over the town's entire toy production, not to mention that Master Chrono's pets were a shocking display of his magical ability, which any self-respecting person, in Mr. Jugo's opinion, would decently keep to himself. Petra marched steadily to the sign of fire, a shop that sold glassware. This store had large glittering windows made from glass cut into many diamond panes fitted together with crisscrossing lines of lead. A few colored bits of glass winked at Petra. A window over the door glowed with the name Stakan in red letters. This is where her friend Tomek lived with his family. Petra stepped in the shop, and which was empty aside from a tin cat curled up in the doorway. He lazily opened one green eye and then closed it. Jasper, I need to see Tomek and Master Stakan. It's important. The cat kept its eyes shut and purred or snored. It was hard to tell the difference. Outraged, Astrophil raced down Petra's arm, but she kept her hand over him and ignored the sharp jabs his legs made against her palm. The spider disapproved of Jasper in general and disliked the cat's bad manners in particular. You'll only make things worse, Petra hissed. Who will make things worse? Jasper opened one eye again. Astrophil, who? Astrophil, who? Me! The spider squeaked against Petra's hand. Oh, the cat snuggled, his head under a paw. He's not important. But what I have to tell Tomek and his father is, she tried calling for them. Tomek, Master Stekan, the house echoed emptily. They're not here, Jasper said. But why don't you keep shouting if you like the exercise? Why don't you try to be worth the oil that you drink, Astrophil cried. Jasper yawned and his teeth glinted like jewels. Speaking of oil, you wouldn't happen to have any, would you? I know where you can find Tomas and Tomix, but sadly, my throat's a little too parched to tell you. Petra sighed. All right, tell me where they keep the brassic. brassica. The cat's silver needle whiskers were alert. Try the wooden jug on the top shelf over there. She fetched the jug and poured oil into Jasper's dish. Now will you help? Jasper lapped up the oil and gave a me metallic meow. More... Where are they? Tomek and his father walked through the door. Here in the shop, Jasper said. Thanks a lot. She put the jug back on its shelf. Aren't you an ungrateful girl? Jasper curled up and went to sleep. Tomek was a year older than Petra. His sandy hair hung in his eyes. He pushed it back from his sweaty forehead. He looked at her uncertainly. Even before Master Shekin spoke, she knew they had that she knew that they knew. Is it true, Petra? Tomas Stekin asked. David's been to town, and he's been telling a strange story about your father. Is it true? Master Stukan was a, as serious as stone as she, he listened to Petra explain what happened. It's too much. His fist slammed against the work table. Bottles tinkled, and one jumped over the edge, smashing on the floor below. Too much. One day the prince will regret the way he treated his people. Even when he was a little boy, he would send people to the gallows as easily as he would wipe his nose. One day he will. His thundering stopped almost as soon as it had begun. He glanced behind him nervously, as if someone might be watching him or hearing his rebellious words. He exhaled, exhaled one long breath and seemed to regain his calm. Maybe there's a way you can help my father, Petra said, and described the idea she had in mind. As she spoke, Master Stakan's, Stakan nodded occasionally. When she finished, Tomak began to say, I think that his father held up a flat hand. 
I'll start working on it, Master Stuckum said, but it will take some time and probably a lot of trial and error. What you're asking for isn't simple, but it was possible, Petra felt hopeful. So she didn't mind when Miss when Master Stuckon shooed them away as if they were little children tugging at his working room. Now you two go find something to do with yourselves. He flapped his hands at them. I have enough to do without worrying about you two breaking something in the shop with your games. If you didn't notice, we didn't break anything, Tomak. Tomek protested. Before Master Stuckon could respond, Petra tugged Tomek up the stairs. He followed her, grumpily stumping, stamping on the worn steps. Apprentice. Me, his apprentice? Bellow blowers is more like it. Pot scrubber, window washer, floor sweeper. What does he need me as an apprentice for if he won't let me do anything? They entered into they entered his room in the attic. Tomak slammed the door shut behind him. The ceiling was low and the day was hot, so they sat cross legged on the cross legged on the floor. He's never even thought about the things I can do. In a low, eager voice, he added. Do you want to see my latest invention? Of course, Petra said. Curious, Astro Phil stood on his tiptoes. Tomek leaned back on his elbow and dragged a beat-up box out from under his bed. He opened it, revealing dice made from pig knuckle bones, a set of stubby car charcoal pencils, and countless marbles. But as Petra looked more closely, she saw that two marbles were different from the rest. They were slightly larger and something flickered inside each one. Tomek plucked the two glass balls from the box and held them out to Petra. She took one and discovered it was light and hollow, a star of bright light pulsed inside. What is it? A bit of lightning. It wasn't easy to get it inside the glass, but easier than you might think. What do you mean? Petra asked. It's pretty simple to manipulate lightning with magic. You see, he explained confidently, lightning and magic are kind of similar, like cousins. Petra studied him. How do you know this? It sounds as if as if you've been taking lessons. Hardly, he scoffed. Who'd teach me? No, that stuff about the lightning was something your father said. My father to you? Something I heard him say. Overheard, he clarified. You know how distracted he gets when he's working on something. Before he left for Prague, I went to the sign of compass one day on an errand for my father. Master Kronos was staring into space, talking to himself. He said something like, I'll start with the lightning. That will be the easiest stuff. The kinship. Between magic and energy, the kinship between pines of raw power. I didn't mean to eavesdrop Petra. His face searched, he searched her face to see if she disapproved. It's just, I haven't been getting any help about how to use magic from my father, so I've been paying attention to yours. Petra was unsure how to respond. Tomek's words immediately made her wonder if she had been paying enough attention to her own father. All she remembered of their conversations before Master Kronos had left for Prague was cogs, gears, dials, and pendulums. But lightning and magic? What did that have to do with making a clock? Anyway, Tomek continued, hearing Master Kronos gave me an idea to try my experiment with lightning first, and I did it. But designing the sphere was nothing compared to trapping that fellow. He lifted the second ball. Inside, a wasp darted back and forth and wrapped its tiny its stinger against the clock. Ping, ping, ping. I thought I could use them for a prank on Mistress Jugo, the idea is that when you break the glass, whatever is inside the ball will multiply a hundred times. Do they work? Astrophil asked. Well, the one with lightning does. This is the second one I've made of that model. I tested the first one in a clearing in the forest and was really lucky I didn't burn down any trees. There was also the after effect of thunder, which I didn't think would happen. But I'm not sure whether this one works. He carefully lifted the wasp marble. I'm not even sure if I want to know. I'd have to break it to make sure it works. And, well, the wasps are supposed to attack whoever's closest to the broken ball. But after making it, I realized that there was no one I disliked that much, that I would send 100 wasps after him. Kind of excessive, isn't it? I mean, he paused and listened to the wasp ping, ping, ping. One is enough. Plus, this wasp might remember me and decide I'm more interesting target than whoever's close by. Remember you, Petra scoffed. Don't be silly. Wasps don't have brains to remember with. He grimaced. It's not its brains that I'm worried about. Petra took the ball from him. The thin glass buzzed under her grip, which tightened as she peered at the insect, insect stinger. Not a pretty sight, she agreed, and passed both spears to Tomek, who tucked them back into his box. I thought of it because Lucy kept pestering me to make earrings for her in the shape of butterflies. Father told Lucy and Pavel that they could make the trip to Prague this year to sell our war, our wares. 
Lucy wants to impress the city folk and Pavo. He rolled his eyes. Lucy was his older sister. She was pretty, plump, and married to Pavel at the age of 18. She, Tomek, and Petra used to explore the woods together when they were younger, but the trio split up after Tomek and Petra suggested that Lucy wade in a muddy creek, though they swore they didn't know the creek was full of leeches. Lucy was hysterical when she discovered little black blood-sucking globs all over her stuck through her pale legs. Wailing, she jumped from the water and rolled in the grass, showing shoving at her brother and Petra as they tried to peel off the leeches. They finally convinced her to let them help, but tears poured down her face and she whimpered at every torn off leech re went as every torn off leech revealed a bruised colored mark. After this incident, Lucy decided Tomek and Petra were not as much fun to play with. Frankly, they felt the same way about her. I have better things to do than make some ridiculous earrings, Tomek continued. But then I thought, what if I used real butterflies? That'd be interesting but also pretty useless. Then I realized that breaking something takes energy and I could use that energy to multiply whatever was in the shattering glass, shattered glass. But a hundred butterflies, that's not so interesting. A hundred times prettier and a hundred times more useless than the just one. Exactly, Tomek agreed with a laugh. Have you considered putting water inside? Astrophil suggested. Tomek reddened his chin. Now there's a thought. Smash the ball onto the wall right next to somebody and they're completely soaked. You'd have to make sure the water multiplies more than 100 times, though, Petra pointed out. 100 drops of water isn't very much. That's not even enough to fill a small pitcher. True. Hmm. Tomek's eyes became unfocused as he considered how he might increase the magnifying power of the spheres. Then his gaze sharpened as he looked at Petra. But the concept is a good one, isn't it? There are so many possibilities. I could multiply almost anything this way. What do you think? I think I'm jealous. She meant that in an admiring way. Magical ability was extremely rare. That is, it was rare if you were not born into a noble family. And it was even more unusual for Tomek to be able to use his talent at a young age, since, since such talents did not typically begin to show themselves until the age of 14. This was the age of adulthood, when the academy tested children who were the sons and daughters of lords, high-ranking military officials, well-connected people, or those rich enough to send, make huge donations to the right people. Someone like Tomek would never be examined by the Academy, let alone admitted. Tomek closed the box with a snap. I keep trying to show father, but he stops me dead in my tracks every time. He's either too busy or too tired. One minute he tells me that I'm too young to do magic. The next he warns me that I'd better stop fiddling around with magic. He told me that his own magical abilities had brought him nothing but trouble and that his life would have been would be a lot easier if he was just a normal glassblower. I guess he lost some friends in the guild. Most cities and villages had a separate guild for each trade. Guilds were organizations that shared their trade secrets among themselves and established rules for how to craft an item and sell it. Usually each town had a glassblower's guild, a leather worker's guild, and so forth. But Okno was so small that if there, there had been a glassblower's guild, Tomek's family would have been the only member. The same was true for many other artisans, including Petra's father. So in this village, there was only one guild. Its members worked with one another, or mostly did. A leather shoe crafted by Mr. Stisney was cinched with a metal buckle made by Petra's father, but Mr. Stisney's leather was made supple by hour, hours of labor, not magic. This was a fact that she was willing to forget when she worked with Master Kronos. Not all the members of the guild shared her attitude. So when Tomek stowed the box back under the bed and said, maybe we should keep this a secret, Petra was not surprised.